Hello and welcome back to Med with Me Simple. We reached 140 subscribers today. Thank you all so much for your support. As I told on my official Instagram page, I'm conducting a medical meme contest. So make your meme and send it to me on my email account or to my uh, Instagram page or to my Facebook page. The links are given in the description of this video. So top 10 memes will be displayed on my YouTube channel and you'll get a shout out for your Instagram page. Good luck. So in this video, we're going to see about polycystic kidney disease. Now let's begin. So in this condition or in this disease, the kidneys are affected so much. So polycystic kidney disease are of two types. The first one is autosomal dominant type, which is also known as adult onset polycystic kidney disease. The second one is autosomal recessive, which is also known as childhood um, polycystic kidney disease. So as the name suggests, the autosomal dominant type is most common in adults and the autosomal recessive type is most common in children. So this is how um, a classical polycystic kidney disease um, affected kidneys looks like. So this picture is taken from Wikimedia. So it looks gross, right? So first let's start our discussion by looking at adult onset polycystic kidney disease. So it's very easy to study this. Uh, I'll, I'll make it simple for you. So first, it's a hereditary disorder and which is characterized by multiple cysts over the kidney and it is accompanied by destruction of renal parenchyma. All these finally leading to renal failure. So it is inherited by autosomal dominant mode of inheritance. So pathogenesis involves two main genes. The first one is PKD1 gene and the second one is PKD2 gene. You can easily remember this because this is just the abbreviation of polycystic kidney disease. So PKD stands for polycystic kidney disease. So the polycystic, uh, the PKD1 gene encodes a protein known as polycystin 1. The PKD2 gene encodes a protein known as polycystin 2. So in both of the cases, uh, invariably, this, uh, both of these case, both of these uh, mutations will lead to a renal failure. But the most severe form is when the PKD1 gene is mutated and in that condition renal failure will occur in a very early age. So in uh, polycystic kidney disease what happens is uh, the cilia in the tubular epithelial cells are affected. So these cilia are basically mechanosensors. The, they sense the uh, pressure and shear stress and all that in the tubular, um, tubular fluid. Uh, the fluid in the renal tubules and uh, they act accordingly and in the polycystic kidney disease these cilia are affected and that's the main pathogenesis um, which is uh, given in the textbooks. So what happens is um, because of that there will be altered calcium influx and these two are the main things which occur in polycystic kidney disease. So the three main things which finally summarizes the things which happen in polycystic kidney disease are abnormal extracellular matrix and cellul increased cellular proliferation and increased fluid secretion. All these uh, finally lead to the formation of cysts in the kidneys. So now let's see how the kidneys look like in polycystic kidney disease. First, there will be uh, increase in the size of the kidney and the shape appears so irregular and the weight of the kidneys is also increased and there are numerous large cysts which are filled with fluid and these cysts uh, can go up to about 4 cm in size. So summarizing all that, um, you can see in this picture that the kidneys are enlarged so much and the external surface appears irregular and you can see many cysts which are filled with fluid and this is how a, a, polycystic, adult, uh, a polycystic kidney disease affected kidney looks like. The clinical features can be to a different extent like this can be asymptomatic in few cases and in few cases it can start from flank pain and hematuria which is presence of hemoglobin in urine Proteinuria, which is excretion of uh, more than 2 gram of protein in the urine per day. Polyuria, which is increased urine uh, excretion. 
and hypertension which uh, which may be the result of uh, renal damage so how do these patients die so we all may think that uh, the kidneys are affected and that may be the most common cause for the de death of these individuals but however um, based on uh, various uh, studies and they have found that the, they found that the most common cause of death in these individuals are heart diseases and the heart diseases uh, are known to cause death in most of these patients with polycystic kidney disease. The second most common cause of death in these patients are infections. So you need to change your idea if you, if you had that idea previously that polycystic kidney disease patients mainly die due to renal failure. No, that's not the case. So they die mostly due to heart diseases and the second most common cause is infections. So now let's start our discussion on autosomal recessive polycystic kidney disease. So as I told you earlier, it's the thing which it's the disease which occurs in childhood. So there are four categories, four main categories of autosomal recessive polycystic kidney disease. So they are categorized based on the time at which they occur. So this includes perinatal, neonatal, infantile, and juvenile. The perinatal is uh, perinatal polycystic kidney disease is the one which occurs around the time of birth. Neonatal type is when it occurs in uh, the first week of birth. Infantile is when the polycystic kidney disease occurs at till the first year of life. And juvenile polycystic kidney disease is when it occurs about one year of life till uh, till the onset of adolescence. So the genes which are involved in autosomal recessive polycystic kidney disease uh, is PKHD1 gene. So this is not the same thing which we saw in autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease. There it was PKD, here it is PKHD. Okay? So the gene which is involved in autosomal recessive polycystic kidney disease is PKHD1 gene. Now this one encodes by a protein known as fibrocystin. Uh, however, this is also associated with cilia function defects as we saw in autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease. So the morphology of the kidneys in autosomal recessive polycystic kidney disease is different from that of autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease. So the kidneys are enlarged but however the external surface appears smooth. That is, um, the cysts are not so prominent on the external surface of the kidney. But when you do a cut section of the kidney, you can see numerous small cysts in the cortex portion of the kidney. So the patients uh, with autosomal recessive polycystic kidney disease or the childhood polycystic kidney disease are at increased risk of developing renal failure at a very early age and they are more prone of dying very soon. And these patients are often associated with something known as congenital hepatic fibrosis which is uh, periportal fibrosis and um, accompanied by hepatic scarring and all that. So apart from this, um, these patients have so many extra renal involvements also, uh, such as barrier aneurysms and uh, valvular defects in heart, etc. So polycystic kidney disease doesn't uh, end with kidneys alone. So they involve various organs in the body and it's so severe. So we talked. We just talked about the most common um, polycystic kidney diseases, but there are also other conditions which involve formation of cysts in the kidneys. So these include cystic diseases of renal medulla, uh, which may include, uh, which includes nephronophthisis and all that. And there, are, there is multicystic renal dysplasia, acquired cystic disease, and simple cysts. So if you guys want me to make videos on this, feel free to comment below, and I'll make videos on that too. There you go, we came to the end of this video. So if you like this video, please leave a like and give suggestions in the comment section below. Subscribe to my channel, share my video to my friends and support me to make more videos by donating on patreon.com. I've given the link in the description of this video. So thank you bros.